Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and I want to give you a little taste of File.io in Python. Switch over here to PyCharm. PyCharm is my favorite Python IDE environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with this text file, which happens to be a comma-separated value file. Here you can see it's got a ton of text in it. And first line is a header, and then everything afterwards are a bunch of entries, and these happen to be real estate sales records for uh, the Sacramento, California area. So we're going to use Python to open up this file and answer some questions like what was the most expensive house sold or what were the top five most expensive houses or something like that. So we're going to use several parts of Python during this example. So you'll get to see a lot of stuff in action. And we're going to start with opening the file. And Python has a very simple way to do that. We can say open and pass a name of the file. So I could say something like dot forward slash data slash Sacramento, whatever the name of that file is there. But of course, if I switch this to run on Windows, right now I'm running on a Mac, you would see that you know the forward slash separators should become the backslash separators and so on. So let's take a step back and come up with a file name the proper way. So we'll use this uh, module called OS. So we'll say, OS and PyCharm will import that at the top for us. Just Alt Enter, yes. OS module, we have the path class, which has a lot of great options here. So we can say, I want to create the absolute path from os.path.join. And this will let you build up a bunch of directories and files and put them together with the platform independent separators, or more specifically, the separator that is accurate for your currently executing operating system. So I can say, I want to go into the data folder, because you can see this file is in the data folder. And then I want to join it with another, whatever the file name is. Let me grab that quickly. There we go. And let's just print out the file name first, just so you guys see what we got going on here. So if I run this, you'll see it's correctly found the data and Sacramento real estate transaction CSV file, put that together and then converted that from a relative to an absolute path uh, into my currently current user's profile. Okay, great. Now what we need to do is load it up. So we could start by saying fin for file input stream equals open. And this is the way you get started with the sort of text and binary files. If you're doing JSON or something, there's more higher level APIs here. So we'll give it a file name, we'd say file name, and we'd give it a mode. And the mode is uh, typically, do you want this to be read only? Do you want to write to the file? Do you want to read and write? Do you want to append and so on? So we're going to say R for read only and without any other flags, this will be text. If we said RB, then it would be binary. Okay, now it turns out this is not the best way to be doing this, but let's go ahead and keep going along this path for just a minute and then we'll come back and patch up this line. So what we need to do is we need to read in this first header over here. We need to figure out what are the actual values we have here and then we're going to start processing the data. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to call a function on this file input stream. We'll say it's going to return us a header. We'll say the header is fin.readLine. That'll read in the first line as comma separated. So I can use some string operations and say split that on commas. And let's just print out the header to see where things are going here. Now you can see we have an array or a list of string, city, zip, and everything, except for in the end we have this little new line. Turns out the read line leaves the new line in there, so let's add one little bit here. We'll say strip to remove all the white space. There we go. Now we have nice clean headers. So the next thing we want to do is loop over this file. We want to go through each line. We want to do this efficiently. If we had 10 million lines in the CSV file, we want to not you know jam them all into memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to just use a for loop. So we'll say for line in fin. We can just leave it like this, and we could say fin, or we could say fin dot read lines. Now read lines would actually bring it into memory. Then we loop, but we can use this streaming API directly against the file input stream. Before we do this, let's come up with a variable to store this in. So we'll say entries is just going to be an empty list. We're going to append to that. And into this list, we want to push in sort of a dictionary of 
these header values and then the actual values for that entry for each line. So we already got the line. We need to come up with the parts or pieces of data or something like that. We'll say line.strip.split and give it a comma. We'll say row equals dictionary, an empty dictionary. We'll say for index comma header value in uh, we want to enumerate the header and this is going to return a tuple of the index and the actual value coming out of here and we'll say row of the header value equals parts of the index all right now let's just print out the row just to see if that we have things working out here oh perfect so here you can see we have things like the square footage is this the street is this Right. So what we've done is we now have a list. Well, we don't have a list yet. We haven't put the items in here. We're going to have a list of these little dictionaries. And then we can sort of ask questions about it. So instead of printing them, let's just push or append this onto our uh, list here. Just to show you what we have loaded, let's print out this little entries. I'll just print the first five. We'll use slicing here to do that. Here you can see We've got a few entries, and these just are the first five that we found in the file, right? They're not ordered in any particular way, and if we want to ask questions about like what the price is and so on, it would be better to actually order this. So let's do a little bit of sorting here. I'll we'll say the key is going to be a lambda expression. If you don't know what this is, you know, we'll cover it in other places, don't worry. So given a row, we would like to sort by the price. But if we just say something like this, I would like to sort by row of price turns out because this came up from a text file it's actually a string sort not a numerical sort so we want to be a little careful about that so we need to convert that to an integer and then sort by this and let's print out a few of these things so let's go over here and say for e in entries and we'll just take the first five of them and we're going to print out a little string and we'll say uh, Curly zero beds, curly one maths, sold for curly two, like this. I will format that with E of beds. Those are the, the key names. You just get this by looking in the file. There's no magic here. E of baths. And finally, E of price. So here you can see these are sort of cheap. We've sorted this ascending, so we found the cheapest. Maybe we want the most expensive, so we could have a minus one times this to reverse the sort. And if we do that, you'll see that the most expensive house sold for $884,000 and so on. We can even do a little bit of nicer formatting here. You can remember, say, I'll show this as a sort of a currency type thing with comma separators and in order for that to work I need to convert this to another integer. You don't do it on strings, you do it on numbers. There you go. So what have we done? We've used the open method. We've used os.path and its associated methods to get a file input stream from our file. We've used read line on it to pull out a single line and work with it and we've used the fact you can iterate on it to sort of loop efficiently over all the files. And then we did some interesting string operations to answer what are the five most expensive houses sold during this time period in Sacramento, California. Final thing we want to look at is using this, this style, if we were to maybe return early or even run this code and not let it really exit, we're not properly closing this. So we could put at the end a fin.close, but it would be much, much better to use the, a with statement. So we can come down here and say, I would like to be more deterministic about closing this file. So I can say with, I'm gonna reverse the order a little bit, with open this as fin, do a colon, and we've got an indent up to there. So we wanna say with this, we wanna work with the file stream here. And then when we're done, as soon as we leave this with block which is right there we'll close the file object and just keep going so let me just run this to show it still works excellent if you want to learn more stuff like this consider taking our python course at developmenter thanks bye